three other reports. With that, you can see eight. Number eight, they are incredible. Mom comes two year old baby on highway. Let her die so I will be free. We see that. That's what this next edition is talking about. Look at the baby. Don't. This is another baby. Don't. You can see the reference here for the newspaper. Don't. When people are looking for children, this a day old baby is dumped, the young ones dumped that. And what can we do? For us to avoid this in the 21st century, the business teachers are talking about violence, violence, attitude. We, the teacher must be a trainer, not only to teach and go. When we say trainer, in, in those days, let me recall in those days, when you do something bad, your mother will say, I will report you to your God's mother. That's what I'm right. That's what we used to do. But today, nobody cares. The God's mother is no longer there. And your teacher will flood you and even report to your mother. But these days, the mother will go to the school and find the teacher. So, the teacher must be a trainer. Not only to teach and go. Not only to teach, but to train the people in reading skills, communication skills, listening, speaking, problem solving, interpersonal to human relations, so encouraging teamwork and code. And then we have again, the next one in complete divide of hard work. Children do not want to work today. The second one says the teacher of the 21st century must be a vocational counselor. Vocational, spiritual, economic, and social. In those days, I report again, the children will do their handkerchief, uh, that's their needle work, they will run and show it to the auntie in the school. Look at this, and the auntie will correct it. But nobody does that again. These are very important. These are some of the things, vocational. And with that, you encourage this child. This child will do well in home economics. This child will do well in dentistry. This time we do well in building. This is what we are talking about. Today. Then we have the child one, uh, Sorogen parents. You, the, the teacher of the 21st century should be a friend, should be human relations specialist, should be a psychologist. If a teacher may be teaching these days and see a child building, nobody cares. After the end, you just finish and go. But in those days, you see, when the teacher is teaching and the child is feeling somehow, the teacher will go to the child, what happened? And see, I'm not eating. My child is telling me. It's okay, don't worry. At the end, that teacher will attend to that child. The child may not be living with the parents. The child may have been working two hours a night. And the teacher can now reach the home by being a surrogate parent to that child. But it does not happen. Business education is working along this line. Then for leaders, not only a leader, you have to be a role model. I took the position of a role model and mentor. Our children are behaving this way somehow because they lack role models. They lack mentors. Then the promoter of gender equality and the streaming. That was why we established that uh, Directory. And today, the point is that the internet is playing a role in this aspect by fishing out the boys who are in the department of OTM and the girls who are in physics or engineering and awarding scholarship to them. That's what we are doing. <laughs> then here, we have another factor we have to talk about is that we decided to undertake other studies to find out how business education could play an important role. Awareness is very important so that this stigmatization will stop. And now, these are some of the things I came out with. The study was in 2010, conducting need assessments, state the strategies, ways, and means to achieve each target, visitation of stakeholders, organizing of workshops, establishment of what to do, when, how, why and by then engage it in awareness campaign. The next is from curriculum. If we do not change, if we do not look inwards, we have problems. For a country to achieve total development, 
both in human capital and in transactional the luxury, there is need for me to take a simple that is static and that is built in one technical or pragmatic way, so that the changes can be accommodated at all levels, and those who need to benefit from it will do so. Nigeria has come to a stage where differentiated curriculum should be used if we are to have positive social change. In a country like ours, we are less than half of the youth are employed, and social ills have eroded our value system to the largest extent. We are right here for the need for us to look for new ways to integrate humanity into programs, and this is through the curriculum. In some countries I have here, Indonesia, Malaysia, and they adopted an integrated approach to curriculum development. And one of the things was to adopt a cross curricular approach. This means that new areas are not integrated as separate subjects, but rather appear to us the curriculum. Nobunia did not only apply an integrated approach, but introduced an open window approach too. This was done in order to reflect the rapid changes and the market issues that they are occurring. For example, in the health education subject, Mongolia included bad habits, mental health, reproductive health, and HIV to AIDS, among others, to ensure that our country enjoys social stability. This is what Nigeria should do. How can we continue to say that uh, the increase in the rate of uh, HIV that we keep higher if we integrate this in, into each of the individual then we will not have problems. But we continue to say it's an what of two yes, data on so she can be stand They included robbery, rape, fraud, examination and practice, presentation stealing, false acquisition of wealth, prostitution, drug costing, bestiality, loss of value, sexual harassment, conflict resolution, and others. Any curriculum for teacher change must embrace all segments of the society. This is because the students are taught in the classroom and they are the project, I mean the product of the Society. What we are seeing here, there's an appendix here, which is not in the past. Here we have, there must be, if we want to change, there must be for policemen, for the politicians, for the mothers, for the diversities, for those who are prone to any form of violence, there must be for religious groups, there must be for students, there must be for prostitutes, for commercial sex workers. There must be for elderly women. Because even for retirees, we should have for them. It's like that in other countries. Okay. We have here, it is no longer news in this country that when girls become pregnant, they go for an adoption, I mean abortion, don't or kill the baby or even organize them for sale. Those who do the business or that are direct or indirectly in the claim to be uh, claim to be in the medical profession have shown the public that ethics of the profession have been eroded. In a society like ours, most marriages are shaky as a result of childlessness and or infidelity. Couples do not want to find out what the problems are, but to go all the way to accuse each other. As a result, there are cases of divorce, separation of couples, of couples, or marrying of one another. The curriculum should be there. When we are taught all this, then you find out we have to, and the, all these things will no longer be problem to the government and even to the society. Then let's move further, move further. Then you can see what we are talking about. Look at the children. The elders, in those days, if we say people are protesting, we talk about elders. But today, look at the young ones there. What are we teaching them? Before you should say Jack Robbins, they will run to the street. When they go to the tertiary institution, it's no longer something you will tell them. They will move into the streets. That's why we are having problems. 
So there was in this curriculum for social change. Move on. Then you can see this. You can see a small child begging money. Suppose he's ignorant. You can see. Let me tell you, that child doing that is, he's not dumb. He's not deaf. You can see that they're giving him something if you read it closely. Deaf, dumb, help out, do this, do this. If this child starts this trip now, when the child grows, he's going to be expert on this thing. The girl is not left out. With this now, this girl will be raised. This child will be taken away. This advice, attitude, what this test of cultural education is talking about. In the past, we usually talk about a family is known for something. And in my case, it's like that. And that means that if uh, your father used to, I don't know, this bone something, you know, the repair of bones or anything, yes, then you find out that even if the man passes on, Somebody in that family, like any lover, if we still continue, but this day, the thing is dying to me. If the man dies, it's closed. So you find that if these children are given that type of vocational training, they can no longer think of going to the road. Move on. It's also with the girl. Move on. Now, you can see this. It's very common. All over the country, this is very common. What do we do? Vocational education is the answer. Move on. Well, the woman that is putting this child, I mean the children, right here in the street, if that woman is a pig with any vocational skill, then the right value or moral value, the, children, the, man, the woman will know that subjecting these children to this environment is not the right thing because they will grow up to live in the streets. Move on. Move on. Okay. We have another one. Please move on. I want to hear this one. Okay. We have another one. We have also talked about business education and methodologies. This is very common. Again, the techniques we use for carrying out our research, we do not use the right method. In this case, in 1999, we tried to examine the extent to which research carried out in business education area are, I mean, we are usable. In this case, we discovered that so many things went wrong. If we really want to do what others are doing, we must get the right results if we carry out the study. And that is why, if you go to where we have our data today in Nigeria, most of the results, they are not usable. They are, you cannot use them. Instead, you go and test them in other countries. You find out that they noted that if a questionnaire is not ideal for a particular study, you use the observation method. If you want to find out, evaluate, assess, or determine, or examine something, do not use the questionnaire. It was found out that over how many percent of the studies I went to used the questionnaire method, because the questionnaire method was the easiest one. Okay. And because of that, we could not use them to do anything. To so plan. Move on. Then again, if we want to adopt, that's the problem with the country. We try to find out the extent to which what we adopted from other countries, we are adapted into our own environment. It was discovered that we adopted something that we did not adapt it into our own environment. If I go to the north now, get uh, the tomatoes, get the cabbage, then I say I want to come and grow it here. If you don't test the soil, test everything, find out whether it will fit into our own soil, then you will just make a mess of the whole thing. You can't say it's growing there, it must grow here at the same, I mean in the same way. So that's what we do. 
we adopted, we have adopted e-learning, e this, e this, and we said it's working. It is not working up to 40 percent in this country. So we have to adapt it to our own environment for usability. to functional education and value reorientation. This is very, very important to me. Business education has, as its objective, the incorporation of the right value. Inculcate in the right value. Inculcate the right value in the child. Also, as to make the individual become morally upright and contribute to his or her quota to the society. I recall very well that in those days, anytime you sit down as a uh, girl, our mothers will say, this property, do you know you are right here? I, I hope we were doing that. Yes. 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 But now, nobody cares. The youngest will come here, the uh, professor of these people are, she will cross her leg and she will just sit like that. So, in this aspect now, we try to carry out a study in Joko and the 2007. This was stipulated by the author's observations and experiences at Dean and Deputy Dean, respectively of student affairs at the Federal Polytechnic Limited during the period. This became necessary because an earlier study on teaching information on which I did school is through business education, challenges to business educators in Dogo and Nose 2005, had established the lack of information, especially among youth has led to increasing rate of HIV to this infection among this vulnerable group. They also find that office workers were not left out. This is so because this case education has one of its key objectives as the provision of information to individuals that will enable them fit into the world of work and careers of their choice. The study clearly demonstrated that these people were equipped with the right information and learning activities that reduce social vulnerability, the risk of HIV infection will be highly reduced. Moreover, HIV education, according to CLEP 2003, can provide relevant, adequate, and appropriate values that encourage learners to adopt behaviors that will minimize infection. We can put down as a Based on all of their posts, we talk and they can recommend that units that deal directly and indirectly with students should reorientate their values and ensure that the screening of students in their first years of admission into the institution as well as building a build confidence in them. The first may raise serious objection as it will be seen as infringing on the rights of the individual. Based on the assumption on the assumption that business education can contribute to molding of right value among students and other vulnerable groups, a study on the contribution of business education to the calling of what in Nigeria in the educational system was undertaken too. It was clear that the story, from the study that business education can contribute to the reduction of poverty by removing the values and attitude of students positively, as well as helping them understand and explore the world of work, the world in which they live. Similarly, it was found that the introduction of citizenship education would make them understand and appreciate that each individual has the right to live. What is happening to the killing, killing Boko Haram and Ko? If students are given this type of education, they will cherish life, they will value life, that everybody has the right to live. In 2012, a study of emerging challenges in office technology and management program was conducted by the top 2012. Among the subjects, students were expected to be exposed to. We have managing the bus. It was said that any person who can use the computer will be called a secretary. This is false. Now look at what we have here. Managing the bus. Both the good and bad side of the bus. We, we are two steps. Then you have secretary bus relationship. Managing the workstation, both the supervisory and administrative functions, managing sexual harassment, handling difficult visitors, handling official politics and lies, 
We have what we call official lies. And you know that very well. When St. Augustine says, you cannot see somebody has tell, I mean, somebody is telling lies. It depends on their intent. It depends on the intent. If I'm over to the house and your husband runs under the bed, if they come here and say, where is your husband? Will you show them your husband? <laughs> Not that we are selling them and we are trying to hide by bad things. No. For secretary boss relationship, the secretary must develop a relationship with the boss that will enable them to work in a healthy atmosphere. For instance, if the wife of the boss is coming and you know that the boss has the girlfriend inside the office, yes. We yes, we, we know that very well. Professor Woods, I don't know why I'm telling that, but you are it. So, you find out when it, the boss is inside the office with the girlfriend, and the wife has been suspecting the girl, there is no way, when you see the wife coming, no secretary, unless they ask secretary, you have not developed that relationship with your boss. If you have developed a good relationship with your boss, you will not feel the same in the office. You will not allow your boss to be disgraced. You will not allow the man to be sacked. What do you have to do to go and block that woman? Yes, run to the woman. Madam, madam, come, come. Our guy is over there. He's over there. And technology speaks for itself. Madam is around. You need the best telephone. <laughs> Call the mature ego or the parent ego. We have been taught. If the person is an elderly person, you use the mature ego. If it's a child, you use the parent ego. All this we are taught in business education. And again, if it, the official politics we are talking about, not when your boss is quarreling with another boss, then you see the other boss, you look like this. You won't say good morning. No! Maintain that relationship, but be very careful. This is it. We taught all and we displaced all this, and that's why that is why the business institution is different. Then you have the medical. <laughs> you have the medical technology. You can see no secretary, nobody that will go through business education that will not learn it in short term because you can work anywhere. So when you see them using this technology, you know what it's all about. Okay. Then we talk here about value reorientation. We carried out another study on business education and value reorientation for national economy development. We try to find out the degree. Uh, the, the, we find out that you come and see that values have been eroded. We have to categorize the values and we see to what extent do people default in the following values. Hard work to industry. You can see the responses highly violated, showing that our people are no longer that. Look at the response again, violated, partially violated, not violated. You can see all these going down. This group of, you can see. The next one, we say respect, love, all these pieces are there. For charity, we can see highly violated. People don't come to work and they do what they like. It was clear from the uh, 10 
that sexual purity was the most violated value. As 310 out of 324 reported has been on You can see that. For choice and honesty, we are next in degree of violation. Surprisingly, the values of tolerance and patience had only 16 and 24 respondents reporting strongly violation and not violated, while as high as 156 and 178 respondents reported partially violated and not violated, uh, and not violated respectively. These results seek to largely reflect the values of our society. Move up again, there are things we have to explain. Move, move. Okay. Move. Okay. Move. Okay, you can see now. This is a case of a secretary and the boss. Move up a bit. Move up. Uh -huh. You can see two clothes for comfort. It's two clothes. What do you expect when lack of respect for self, boss and secretary, lack of integrity? If your secretary comes to you to show you something and stays like this two times, I don't think the work will continue. <laughs> Like it or not. There are people who read physics, chemistry, biology, 
they are into sewing, baking, decoration. This is the entrepreneurship. That does not mean that for seeing that career, that does not mean that they are no longer chemists or physics. So you can see, we carry out a study for lifelong education. And if you retire, don't go and sit. There are other means open to you. If the schools could make available curriculum for this class of people as is done elsewhere outside the country, they would have survived. Move up, let me show you again. Look at the opportunities. They could be indoor, they could be outdoor. With that huge capital, you can start this. Move up again. You can see that food related businesses, grass, clothing, merchandise, for and clothing merchandise, uh, fashion, accessories, garments. You can go into any of these worlds. As a rector, I cannot just sit on that seat and watch. If there are other things I know I have to live for, I must go into them. When I retire, I will start scratching my head for two years before I know what to do. If I ask that two years in the list, and you won't do anything again. As you are on the seat, you will continue to do this. When you retire, you do something for yourself. I'm not waiting, they have not paid us. They have not paid us. This is business education and entrepreneurship. Okay, now we're covering another study on uh, value orientation strategy for coding prostitution among the girl child was 52. The main objective was to establish how this girl education could be used as value reorientation strategy to curb the benefits of prostitution and undertake fact, understand factors that enhance the capacity to engage in prostitution. This study was carried out. One fact that became clear during the study was that prostitution was not a new phenomenon all over the world. Indeed, among the first forms of, prostitu of prostitution was what was referred to as sacred prostitution, which was recorded in Babylon. Some commercial sex workers were interviewed in the study. The findings showed that males about the ages of 38 years and above, but more of 48 years and above, patronized the commercial sex workers. Most. Among these were truck drivers, self-employed businessmen, and cows. Surprisingly, these sex workers were found to have their own strategies. They have their rules, they have their regulations guiding them, the code of conduct of members. Yes, it was wonderful. There were reports, and there were reported cases of those killed in prostitution. Members using voodoo on others as well as cases of fighting using dangerous weapons. We can see this. We can see this. She was killed in the process by one of them. Then this one, competition, we can see that. These are girls that have been here for us. Available forms of prostitution include street, office, escort prostitution, and sex tourism. Some of the economic reasons for going to prostitution are presented on the table. You can see economic reasons, you don't pay my school fees, inability to treat as a student, inability to meet natural demands of purchase of tests and sandals, uh, yeah, to pay for accommodation, expectations, living on employment. We have them there. Then move down the domestic ones. You can see from the girl child, mom encouraged me, mom's infidelity, step dad constant sexual demand, mom slept with my PNC, bad languages source from my mother. Yes, you can see we we have been doing that. But we to go and marry, others have married. We say that to our children, bad language. Then my brother is dating of other girls. When the mother goes to stream, the baby goes watches their mouth. That's what happened in this case. Sharing a room with my roommates. The reasons range from encouragement by mother and other and mother's infidelity. Oh, please. Move, move, move. Then we have others. Social reasons, peer pressure, pornographic pictures. Some of us will not go to the internet to find other things. 
but only to go for blood drug cheap. We have addiction, we have after I was abused of rape, we have lesbianism to prostitution and the rest. Sexual demands from lecturers to be in line with other colleagues. All these things happen. Even in the offices, you find out it could be condition for promotion. Now, use in institutions of higher learning as a significant, I mean, significant part of prostitution, graduating into what we now regarded as commercial sex workers. The state of affairs has prompted another study of uh, value implementation for contributing to the neglect of our time onward values and leading to moral decadence. We look at this again. The family, the hierarchical structure of the uh, society and families, we are identified as major contributing factors. Then you can see, if you look at the family structure, these days you know something is wrong with the family structure. If we do not even care, there's no dignity in level, nothing to care. All these things are affecting the children. Move again, move up again, please. Then the role of business education is sustaining small businesses. We may think that business education has nothing to do with small businesses, but it is the only key to the survival of small businesses. You can be a medical doctor. If you can't keep your records well, no, no matter what you do, you will not succeed. The history of your patient, very well. This is business education, office practice. You must have that knowledge of business education. How to relate to the uh, to your friends, I mean to the patients. How you can keep their secrets. Because the secretary is the alter ego of the boss. Then you must learn how to keep their secrets. You must learn how to keep your records. You must learn how to keep that interpersonal relationship. And all that. If you don't, then there is a problem. If you can't communicate with them, there is a problem. You can tell them something and they misinterpret it. So communication. All these things are very important. They are given that. One of the things we discovered that some of the people who run the businesses are those who write history, masters in history, education, and after some time the business will collapse. So some of these things we have to set up something to enable these people understand the trend of business, understand the way things are going, the economy is moving, so that they can sustain these small businesses and encourage the youth to open their own and start something when they graduate instead of waiting for white collar jobs. Then we have the implications. Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is now clear from the presentation made so far that business education as an integral part of technical and vocational education has enormous potentials for contributing to the social, economic, political, and cultural development of a typical developing country like Nigeria. We should therefore be accorded a pride of place among the committee of educational and national development programs in Nigeria. It is also now clear that most of our much desired economic development, economic uh, transformation and social change can hardly be achieved without the influence of vocational business education. Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to borrow a little from an article I I stumbled on while preparing this lecture on vocational and technical education. A key to improving Nigeria's development by Peter Osama in Bangladesh newspaper of August 31st, 2015. It says, it has become very necessary not to only keep technology education bound to the role of manufacturing skilled manpower but also to economic development and global economy in Nigeria. Technology education was previously not seen as fundamental for national development or for the economic development, but for the school dropouts and other social and political development within the nation and for individuals. He adds that technology education is also linked to human resources development. And this has an impact on more than just economic development, but also on the wider development of individuals and societies. 
in the context of our Diago, and all the research findings so far revealed in this lecture may either provide the following development policy uh, prescriptions, given the curriculum content of vocational and business education programs, successful implementation of the small and medium enterprise development program of the Nigerian government, the production of competent and qualified graduates of business education is hampered by inadequacies of the equipment and staffing. Government therefore needs to increase funding beyond present levels for bumper produce by tertiary institutions of the country. There is need for government, education planners, and policymakers to continue to give priority attention to vocational education in institutions of higher learning in order to produce the desired bumper for industrial development of the country. The, and the 2012 annual report of the Federal Ministry of Education has defined as one of the strategies for transforming the Nigerian education sector, increased attention to the development of technical and vocational education in the country. May I call the federal government to give continuity to this policy as a way of ensuring that a body of individuals with technical competence to drive the diverse sectors of the Nigerian economy are produced. In doing this, either, emphasis should be given to the development of implementation of appropriate and relevant curricula to the digital and technical education at different levels of the Nigerian educational system. Curriculum development and implementation must against the production of utilization of adequate number of trained teachers in vocational and technical education, as well as availability and utilization of adequate teaching facilities to enhance teaching learning and adequacy of needed skills. Go up. Okay. In order to give and support the desired effects for the development of vocational education, budgetary allocations to the program needs to be substantially improved as part of the overall national education project in order to avoid the recurring in incidents of underfunding that has led program development and implementation in this area. Managers of educational institutions need to incorporate value orientation and career guidance and counseling as part of school curricula, incorporating in the use the values of honesty, hard work, integrity, and respect for human dignity so that they can develop positive attitude towards practical oriented and productive disciplines, uh, which characterize business education and other programs in the technical and vocational education areas. Use in the way this means should be cancelled to invite the knowledge that they need to go into discipline like this that that make them job creators than job seekers. Okay. Please let me put conclusions if you have the paper. It is now well established that technical and vocational education of reduced education is an integral part plays a central, pivotal, and critical role in the economic advancement of any nation. It is it will continue to play the role even more in the foreseeable future, particularly in developing countries like Nigeria, that are yearning for economic and technological development advancement. It is it is crystal clear that vocational business education has to play a central role in Nigeria's current drive for industrialization job creation, poverty eradication, and quality improvements in the welfare of Nigeria citizens. This is because the bulk of the workforce that will operate the small and medium scale enterprise and offer the greatest of opportunities for employment of Nigeria is the product of professional and technical education. One is therefore tempted to ask the Nigerian government to look towards vocational and technical education for solutions to its current unemployment and industrialization problems. One is business, one is business education to effective organization and learning of these offices and business uh, organizations. Move, move up, move up. Okay. We have technical and vocational education gives individuals the skills to live, learn, and work on as productive citizens in a global society. 
it will be a team of honor to this country to express completely vocational technicians, like other countries did when the going was wrong for them. This is because no country prides itself in poverty, wealth and spiritual poverty. We all know that the time has come when the country cannot take care of one child of the youth and homes have sent them away without skills or values. All this we do. On these notes, please permit me to put acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. No, open your hands. Before I read the last paragraph, let me read the acknowledgement. I wish to express my profound gratitude to the Almighty God for His bountiful blessings upon me and my family in several different ways. His name should be praised and glorified for seeing us through, both good and bad, and we owe him all that we have today. We so, he saw us through all travels. I personally have I personally have the reasons, all the reasons in this world to thank and praise him. My dear director of the Federal Polytechnic Nekede, aware of today, is one of the miraculous works of God. He comforted me when I went through my unusual persecution in this institution. He ensured that I was vindicated and eventually upgraded from the rejected stone by the builders. Mm -hmm. That eventually became the biblical cornerstone. I cannot thank him enough. After God, my next gratitude is to my late parents, Mr. Bernard Nade and Mrs. Eunice Nade. I am particularly grateful to my father, a victim of 1966 crisis, who appeared to see great promise in me as a child and inspired in me the fear of God. He taught me to pray and pray fervently. I took this behest that I was enrolled in the convent in Vienna, Niger State, for the vocation of Reverend Sister, below the age of 10, which was truncated by the Nigerian Civil War. It also inspired me in me the desire for higher education courses. I regret that he did not live to see me for what I am today. May his gentle soul rest in peace. <laughs> also my mom, who labored as a widow for over 35 years, to see that we acquired a certain level of education, heaven is her face. In like manner, I want to acknowledge the support I received from my father-in-law late Parmental Njoko and late mother-in-law, Unique um, Ezine Christian and Joko. They and their entire family welcomed me with open hands and love when I got married into that family in 1979. It is on record that my father-in-law gave me money for the project of form for my master's degree program. <laughs> and equally paid the school fees for the first year. I also owe a debt of gratitude to my dear husband, Professor Jude A.G. Njoku, for being a strong pillar of support in my academy and also career courses. Uh, Indeed, he was a science second supervisor. <laughs> in many respects, he has been my academic mentor and role and model. We appear to have a similar career path. He was once a Dean of Student Affairs of the Federal University of Technology World. And I also was the Dean of Student Affairs of the Federal Polytechnic Naked. <laughs> While he was the Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Technology World 2000 to 2005, I have also risen by the grace of God to be at present the Rector of the Federal Polytechnic Naked. <laughs> It is a unique blessing that both of us, as a couple, have the opportunity and privilege of heading two federally owned tertiary institutions in Nigeria. <laughs> I must say that academically, we grew up together and trained each other one way or the other. My brother-in-law, Professor Selen Njoku, can never be forgotten in the life of my studentship. He played important role at each level of my education 
as his advice and ways of encouragement were motivational. While talking about academics, let me express my sincere gratitude to a host of people whom I came across as I climbed the academic ladder. I must express my gratitude to some of my outstanding teachers at Abadi Bello University, Zaria. Prominent among these are Professor Aina, who was my pioneer head of department, the Department of Vocational and Technical Education at Abadi Bello University, Zaria, and built my interest in the program. Dr. Davis and Professor Labidre deserve special mention in this regard. They were motivational and inspirational teachers. Down to the University of Nigeria, Soka, where I had my master's and doctorate degrees, I remember vividly Professor Suala and his late wife, Professor Mrs. Suala. He was not just a supervisor, he was a father and a mentor. His wife accepted me like their daughter. May she ever rest in the bosom of the Lord. Amen. While a student at various levels, there were some friends who made my studentship interesting. I remember Alice and Dr. Mrs. Agnes Njokuni Imolore, a lecturer at Insu, Gordy, Emma, Edwi, Florence, and late of me, I thank them all. Certain people deserve mention in my life as an academic. Mr. H. Onyewuchi as the rector there, 1991, when I was, who was in the panel that interviewed me and he employed me. Professor Soji as the rector, after me, believed in me and gave me taxing responsibilities that helped sharpen my personal qualities. I say thank you. <laughs> when I joined the Federal Polytechnic Limited, I met the pioneer staff of office management technology, such as next Mr. Amitna, late Mr. Amitna, who was the HOD, and Mr. Elendu, who Elendu, Sir Oiri, Dr. Ahukana, Mrs. Umona, and Mrs. C.C. They were nice and very honest. I also thank other staff, especially Mrs. Special Smoke, who was my office mate. The present and past students of the Department of Office Technology and Management, the School of Business and Management Technology that produced the first female rector after 32 years of the research. Thank you. I will not forget the friendship of Sabo and Makoma, Barista Nemajin Chris, Dr. Mrs. Antonia Nusu, Chief Kuduma, late Dr. Hakwe, Dr. Mrs. Chuk Mezie, Ohiri, uh, S.C. Njoko, Nkina Okafo, Professor B. Nusu, members of the Association of Business Educators, Reverend Father Chris, and a host of others. When I went, when I went through my trials, and persecutions. They stood by me solidly and gave me unflinching support. I thank them sincerely. My very good friends outside the Polytechnic will also be remembered with their families. Carol Devna, Chiyan, Uju, Gloria, Ozok, Rose, George, Vero, Vicky, Nkechi, Angie, Sistango, and others, and a team of others too numerous to mention. Let them be assured that I always remember them. The Fed Noah, Witted and Power Women are all remembered. Fed Noah members, acts of kindness during my reign as the president will not be forgotten. Uju, Chidima, and the rest, who toil day and night, your commitments and sacrifices are still remembered. Sir Chris Omenka and Dr. Basogo, we are deputy rectors, while Mr. I am Ali Berenistra, Chief ANOP, Bossa, and Mr. I. Oti, holy librarian, were principal officers when I came on board. They gave me a warm reception, which led to a smooth takeoff. I freely volunteer and freely volunteer their advice and guidance when requested. To date, they have not in any way relented, as each day they put in extra effort. The present polytechnic librarian, Mr. Chris Enya, is not left out. I thank you all for that. Currently, as a rector, I have enjoyed the strong support, cooperation, and collaboration of my principal officers and members of Polytechnic Management. No Eleke, my pioneer deputy rector, now called dating director, academic program, deserves special mention. She is a strong pillar to our support. <laughs> I have enjoyed the very strong support of all my principal officers both past and present. 
But Mr. Chukum and Mr. Jason on the farm have labored so much that they have denied themselves so much effort just to see that this administration succeeds. I am very grateful. To all the past and present beings, directors, heads of departments, we need too numerous to mention. I say a big thank you to you all. This is because you have made the work easier for me. Great business educators like Dr. Anya, late Dr. Anya Dubao will not be forgotten in the history of Association of Business Educators Abel. He was one of those that gave vocational business education a name. Professor Sundineche, Okwa Nansom, Anadene, Nosu, Epeyon, and others are here today. They are the Moses of business education. There are men who have said that the levels of our heroes past shall never be in vain. I respect them for that. I also mentioned here that Professor Sam Okwanaso was my external examiner for my PhD defense. He is a thorough scholar. God bless you all. For the Union and Women Association, what can I say? The chairman and presidents have given me cause to smile and be proud. They have always piloted the affairs of their unions in such a way that high level of, I mean, high level of discipline and decorum were observed at each time. Please pick it up and keep the flag flying. The staff in my office deserve special uh, chance. They have kept the office organized and peaceful, which has helped me to achieve a lot. Victor, Elvis, and Busy, I thank you all with the rest of the office staff, whose names I cannot list here. Patricia and Fable, I thank you both sincerely for painstakingly undertaking the title of major part of this work, of this manuscript. Some people will do the same thing for you. Let me also thank the former chairman of the Governing Council, Dr. Mrs. Josephine Ahibu, and her members for finding me fit and appointing me rector of the Polytechnic. They are men and women of honor and dignity. I thank them. I thank them for their fairness and transparency. In which, in which they process my application, may God bless them and their families. I also thoroughly uh, enjoyed working with the Dr. Ago Yusuf led governing council of the Polytechnic. They saw the Polytechnic as part of them and they worked with management and staff with this. I thank the chairman and members for that wonderful cooperation. I wish I could have them again. <laughs> Let me now come back to my family. I have strongly, I have strong reasons to thank God for the kind of lovely and disciplined children he gave me. I owe a debt of gratitude to my four lovely children, Cynthia Wanyaki, Ninjoku, Uche Njoku, Dr. Emeka Njoku, and Kobi Njoku. They have never given me any cause for concern and palpitation because they have conducted themselves in the most disciplined and well-trained manner. <laughs> my brother, Dr. Fon Frank, and sister, Teresa Ampone, as well as brothers and sisters, have been pleasant and most supportive. I thank them all. I will not forget the immense assistance and support I received from the Executive Secretary, NBTE, Dr. Kazarin, and the entire staff of the board. The Indian First Honorable Minister of Education, Mala Shukaru, who has sat our call just at the point of his exit, is highly appreciated. Professor Mrs. Rufai, Dr. Mrs. Shuara, Hajia Abdullahi and Dr. Morgan. Their advice and guidance will never be forgotten. The other staff of the Federal Ministry of Education and all other regulatory agencies are highly appreciated for their contributions. May the Lord Almighty continue to bless them. That I am working assiduously is as a result of the intervention of FEDCOM through the Federal Government. I therefore thank the President and all regulatory agencies for providing a comfortable teaching and learning environment for us all. The normal lecture can comfortably take place in this.